Chiswick Lifeboat Station was one of four created for the River Thames in 2002, following the inquiry into the Marchioness tragedy. Sure, well the coxswain knew nothing about this. <laughs> A crew of at least three is on duty at the station round the clock doing 12-hour shifts. At Chiswick, there are 10 full-timers and 40 volunteer crew. I'm just doing the old Michael Jackson dancing out on the balcony. Emergency 999 calls are received by London Coast Guard, who alert the nearest lifeboat station. Right, OK. So we've got a male in the water at Wandsworth Street. OK then, mate, we're on the way. The crew are underway in the lifeboat within 90 seconds of receiving the call. Stand line off! Now clear! The Thames Lifeboat Service is designed to reach anyone in trouble within 15 minutes. The incidents that we respond to vary wildly. You could come in for your shift and really anything could happen. About 60% of the incidents that we respond to involve people either in the water or at risk of being in the water, but who aren't on or have been on a boat. About 30% of the incidents we respond to do involve people on boats. The remaining 10% are the miscellaneous things. They're the cars in the river. Their dog or, or animal is out in the river and it's in danger. We are particularly concerned about the owners who are going to try to save the animals themselves. On average here at Chiswick we respond to about 200 incidents every year. Uh, those incidents result in about a hundred people on average per year being rescued. In fact, Chiswick is probably the second busiest station in the entire country. There's no other organisation that performs this service. We're actually a dedicated search and rescue service. Um, and, I, you know, I think it's very important. Hello, London Coast Guard, Chiswick Lifeboat, radio check on Channel Zero, over. Well, this is Gary. Um, Gary's a full-time member of staff as well. Uh, we run with two full-timers and one volunteer. Moving on, we've got Joe. This is our most important guy for the day. Joe's, Joe's a, uh, a paramedic. So um, he, he comes in quite handy. Hello, sir. Yeah, no breathing. Is it just chest pressure for you? 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 25, 26, oh, stay clear. 100. I think it's probably the same for all of us. Whichever service we work for, I think everyone would feel the same. I don't think there's a greater satisfaction than, the, than knowing. When you arrive at somebody whose life is in danger or is threatened, and then being able to successfully intervene and to save that person's life. When you do get good results and everything goes according to plan, you do get, get a hell of a buzz out of it, because they don't go well all the time. My primary concern, if I go to a job that isn't a happy ending, is the well-being of, of, of my volunteer crew. We'll always take the volunteer aside after a job like that and have a chat about it. But the bottom line is, you've got to do it. Our volunteer group is fantastic, actually, because they're so completely varied in their backgrounds. Um, you know, we have people who are chefs, photographers, policemen, firemen, all the things you'd expect, but we've got the city bankers and the, you know, independently wealthies. We've got absolutely everything. And they come into the station and they all become one. I'm a freelance photographer. I work for myself. Um, so for me, it works really well because I sometimes can find, can find it a bit solitary working for yourself. Obviously, you don't have the, the team office environment that you're in. It's a different team every day you're working with. So it fits in really nicely that, that I have that element to being part of a team. To be honest, it's really good fun and I think you do have to be prepared to have quite a good sense of humour to work with so many men, but it is always enjoyable. The support that we receive from the public is critical to everything that we do, mainly because we're in the business of saving lives. Because of that, we need really good equipment and we need really good training to make it possible. Examples are, one of our lifeboats is currently costing well in excess of a quarter of a million pounds. To keep one of our crew members trained for a year is over 1,200 pounds. A simple piece of kit like a defibrillator is one and a half thousand pounds. All of these things add up 
And the support of the community in Chiswick and the support that the public gives the RNLI around the UK and Ireland are fantastic. Our running costs annually now, nationwide, are £135 million and that is entirely met by the voluntary contributions that we receive from the public.